Hi, and welcome to part three of looking at building Metro style applications with HTML and JavaScript. In this little screencast, what I'm going to do is instead of focusing on some of the coding aspects, I'm going to show you some of the tools that you have available. Again, just a quick pass through so you can see some of the other capabilities that you have as you develop these applications. So far, when I've been running or debugging my applications, I've been using the um, you know debug on the local machine option. You do have a remote machine option, which allows you to deploy the application onto another device on the network you're on and actually run it, for example, on a touch-enabled laptop um, or, or tablet um, while still setting all of my breakpoints and debugging over on this uh, machine that I'm on right now inside of Visual Studio. A really nice feature that's very, very handy is to run your application in the simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and start this in the simulator. And what you're going to see happen is a simulator will fire up. And what we're actually doing is RDPing back into your own uh, dev machine and launching another instance of your desktop here. So this is kind of like a virtual machine, Hyper-V sort of thing. I'm not an infrastructure guy, but that gives you kind of the idea of what's going on here. And I can run my application right here inside of this simulator. Now, where the simulator really starts to get used is in a couple different areas. One is the, the kind of the obvious one is, is well, what would my application look like if the user you know, flipped their tablet on the edge? And so now I can see that, oh, I get this nice kind of vertical layout. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and go and put it back to normal. What's even more valuable is what would happen if the user, instead of running it on the little tablet, was running it on a very high resolution, large monitor. So I can then simulate this on a big 27 inch monitor with real high uh, resolution. And I can kind of get a feel for what that environment looks like as well. I can also come over and tell my mouse pointer to simulate different touch modes um, as my application runs. So for example, if I want to see what uh, my application does, if I use a swipe gesture, I can turn on the kind of the finger emulator here and just do little flick gestures. And now you can see it's a little hard to see. Maybe I can kind of get this little gravity effect going on here uh, while I'm working with that. And I can simulate pinch gestures. I can simulate the rotation gesture with your fingers, all those cool things. I can take a screenshot of my application, which is great if you need screenshots of your application before you publish to the store. The other really cool cool thing that the simulator also allows us to do, and I can do this also if I have multi-monitor or if I'm doing remote debugging or whatever, but most of us will probably be using the simulator. And what I'll do is change the resolution back here so we uh, can see things a little bit easier. Is I can come onto my, uh, into back into Visual Studio. You see I have this thing called the DOM Explorer here. And I could say, you know what, I want to select an element because I want to see, you know, kind of what's being set to how is my element being styled in this layout. So I'm going to go ahead and select an element. And I'm going to go ahead and just select uh, one of these bolded tags here for, that tells us who's actually making the tweet. And you'll see that back inside of Visual Studio, it shows me you know, the size of that element, the padding, the border, all kinds of you know, layout information that I may be interested in. I can look at all of the styles that are being applied. So here's the font style being applied in italic. And I can see, well, that's you know, on the div with the target. And over here, you know, is the style, it's coming from the style sheet. That's, you know, CSS is where that value is coming from. Or what's even more interesting is I can come into styles and I can actually start to change values here if I wanted to and kind of on the fly see what my environment would look like. So again, just to show you what I mean by that, if we go back to the simulator, you can see that all of my text here has kind of got an italic default. And where that's coming from is right here, from my, my tar the style being applied to the target tag. And why don't we just come in here and go ahead and say, you know what, I don't want uh, any uh, you know style really, I just want the default. And if we come back to the simulator now, you can see that all of my text has gone back to kind of a normal look and feel. So that's just another useful tool that I can use uh, to you know debug my application. Now the other thing that's really cool about this environment as well is let me go ahead and split screen this up so we can see things a little bit better is down here I have an actual JavaScript console that I can work with. So I'm going to come in and let's go ahead and say var dlg windows.ui.popups.message dialog. And actually I need to say I need a new one of those. Sorry about that. And at the end of this then what I'm going to do is just put in the word test. And we fire that up, and then we're going to say DLG show async. And you can see that I'm actually causing things to happen in the emulator just using the console window here. And I can go in and change values, you know, call other functions, whatever I'm used to doing in my F12 developer tools or whatever, right? Whatever uh, HTML developer tools you use in the browser, um, I can use the same types of approaches inside of my JavaScript uh, console window there. 
So just a few little useful tools for you to use while you're debugging. Hopefully you found those useful. And in the next uh, screencast, what we'll look at is kind of the life cycle as we start to explore the WinJS side of the house for developing our applications.